Hi guys, in this video, I'll be talking about infective endocarditis, specifically its risk factors, organism involved, sites, types, clinical presentation, diagnosis, and treatment. So moving on to the risk factors of your uh, infective endocarditis, they may be due to ab any abnormal valves or bacteremia. Abnormal valves may be due to any previous endocarditis or aortic or mitral valvular disease. They may be also due to any valve prolapse or her rheumatic heart disease. Even they can ca all caused by your artificial valves. Now the second risk factor that I already said that is bacteremia and that can happen due to bad conditions in dealing uh, venous catheters, hemodialysis, diabetes and intracardiac devices. Now moving on to the organisms involved. Organisms involved in your infective endocarditis are your step variants that are most common in infective endocarditis, step aureus in IV drug users and step epidermidis in prosthetic valves. Other organisms include Hasic group of bacteria. It is an abbreviation of initials of the genera of this group of bacteria that is Haemophilus, uh, your Actinobacillus, Cardiobacterium, Echinella, Kingella. Now we are talking about the most common sites of your infective endocarditis. The most common site is your mitral valve, second most common site is aortic valve and in the right uh, in IV drug users the right sided tricuspid valve is involved. Now moving on to the types of endocarditis, there are two types of endocarditis that is acute endocarditis and subacute endocarditis. Acute carditis happens on normal valves and they produce very large vegetation that extend onto cordate tendony. These vegetation does not have granulation tissues and the most commonly the agent involved is Staph aureus. Other agents, other causative your organisms may include your Staph pneumonia and Staph pyogenes. Now talking about Staph acute endocarditis, they are they happen on not on normal walls but on damaged walls and have less valvular destruction have and they have less valvular destruction and have granulation tissue unlike your acute endocarditis that have don't have granulation tissue at all. Now what are the agents involved? Agents involved are Staph viridians, Staph sanguis, Staph mitis uh, and that are most commonly and other agents include Streptococcus bovis, Enterococcus faecalis, Enterococcus facium and coxilla. Now talking about clinical presentation, the clinical pre presentation of acute endocarditis include uh, with high fever, chills, fast heart rate, fatigue, rapid and extensive heart valve damage. There will be patiki that there are like tiny purple red brown spots on the skin and they actually form when your capillaries break. There will be also abscesses can be confirmed through your conduction abnormalities on electrocardiogram. On ECG you will uh, see abscesses because of the conduction abnormalities you will observe on your ECG graph. Also murmur, uh, new murmur and change of murmur can also be observed. Now talking about subacute endocarditis, it don't have a high fever, it have a low fever but it still chills, night sweats, pain in muscle zone, a persistent tired feeling, headache, shortness of breath, poor appetite, that's the pure appetite causing low weight, also anemia, clubbing and spigomagali is also seen. Also there will be congestive heart failure and conduction abnormalities as well. The physically uh, on the body. On the body, you will observe rot spots or an ocular nodes as well. Now, talking about subacute endocarditis, the other type of your uh, infective endocarditis, you will have low-grade fever, unlike your acute endocarditis, which has high fever. You will have chills, night sweats, pain in muscle joints, uh, tired feeling, headache, shortness of breath, poor appetite. That will cause your low uh, loss of weight. Anemia, clubbing, splenomegaly will also be seen. There will be congestive heart failure and conduction abnormality as well. Other physical changes will also be found all over the body, such as raw spots that are also known as latent spots or latent sign. They are actually red spots with dilated pale centers on the retina. There will be ocular node on pulp of digits, glenomyositis, arthritis, Janeway lesion. Uh, there are actually painless lesion on palm and feet. Splinter hemorrhages that are seen on your fingernails. Uh, how you will diagnose infective endocarditis? So the most accurate diagnosis for your endocarditis is your blood diagnosis. 
because it actually guides your antibiotic therapy. The other diagnostic method you can also observe is your ECG. It, ECG that detects the progress of vegetation. It is also helpful in checking wall damage and abscess formation. The type of ECG that is done and that is more specific and uh, sensitive for your infective endocarditis is transesophageal echogram, also known as TEE. The um, method of diagnosis is your modified Duke criteria. So the diagnostic criteria is based upon modified Duke criteria that has your major and minor categories. Now, in the major category, there will be electrocardiogram positive for infective endocarditis. There will be new valv valvular regurgitation and the bulk culture typical of your infective endocarditis. In the minor category, that is your predisposition of any heart condition or your injection drug use. There will be also fever. There will be immunologic phenomena including rheumatoid factors and microbiological evidence, positive blood culture. There will be immunologic phenomena including your rheumatoid factors, microbiological evidence, positive blood culture or serological evidence of your active infection. Other tests include your CBC, UCE, ESR, urinalysis and urine culture. Now the treatment can be emphatic or specific. Now, Talking about emphatic antibiotic therapy, for acute bacterial endocarditis, it is vancomycin plus gentamicin. For subacute bacterial endocarditis, that is ceftraxone and plus gentamicin, or or your benzyl penicillin plus gentamicin, or your amphicillin plus gentamicin. Now, the in prosthetic valve uh, infective endocarditis that is caused by prosthetic valve, uh, you will give a vancomycin plus gentamicin, filarifampicin, or Vincomycin plus gentamicin plus sephimpine. Now, the other method of treatment is your specific antibiotic therapy. If variadian streptococci or acid group involved, you will give your ceftriaxone. If Steph aureus pen penicillin sensitive is involved, you will give oxycillin, nephicillin, cefazolin, benzyl penicillin. Now, the, if the, uh, the Steph aureus is a penicillin resistant, you will give and uh, you will give your vancomycin and step epidemics all you will in step epidemics you will also give your vancomycin in enterococci you will give ampicillin and gentamicin in fungal infection you will give ampothericin or you will go for the wall replacement other method of treatment apart from the antibiotic is surgery and it is done when antibiotic therapy fail or there is abscess formation or large vegetation on left side left sided heart walls or there is prosthetic wall it is also done in fungal endocarditis as well. There is also drugs for prophylaxis of endocarditis given after such same procedure related to heart, teeth and lung so infective endocarditis doesn't develop. Now,